Making $100 per day with stake is very possible once you know the right investments you need to make. There's over 500,000 people using the platform and during the video we'll be covering how to make an account, a breakdown of the fees and we'll be going through all the unique pros and cons and the exact step-by-step -step process of actually buying some shares of a company using the platform. So firstly you have to make an account. Now this is no harder than making a profile for Instagram or Facebook. You will need all the general pieces of info like email address, phone number, date of birth and then you have to send through some ID. Either your driver's license or your passport will work perfectly well. Once all that info is sent through it takes about two days for it to be verified and then you'll be nice and ready to start investing some money. When you first sign up, you can use my referral link down below in the description box that will give you a free stock in either GoPro, Dropbox or Nike. And currently the Nike stock is worth over 100 US dollars. And they're also doing a promotion for GoPro where they'll give you three shares instead of one. If you wanted, you could just sign up using the affiliate link, withdraw the money into your bank account and then not even have to use the platform to do any investing. Once you have your account set up, you'll need to put some money onto it. So you can either do this by doing a direct bank transfer and every stake profile will have a unique bank account number tied to it and you just save that as a PayYE on your mobile banking app and then you can directly transfer stake from your phone to put money onto your account. In terms of how long this takes, it's normally about one to three business days for the money to show up on your account. You can also top up through a credit card but this is a bit more expensive and carries more fees so I would always go with the bank transfer option. So once your profile set up you have some money on your account you'll want to start doing some investing from here you've got two main options that stake offers in terms of investments you can either look at ETFs or exchange traded funds and then there's also individual stocks so I'll be comparing the two of these and going through some of the unique pros and cons for each of them so firstly we'll go with ETFs since these are also the option that will help us get that $100 per day return. Firstly, an ETF is just a collection of multiple different companies all come together based on a particular investment goal. So there's lots of different varieties you can get. You can have ones that track specific sectors in the market like property or technology. Then there's ETFs that might look at a specific commodity like gold or silver and then some of the most popular ETFs are ones that will track an entire country's stock market. So in Australia you have the ASX 200, it's the biggest 200 companies in the Australian market and then in America you have something called the S&P 500, again the biggest 500 companies over in America. So with these you're going to have access to some of the biggest companies in the world if you're investing in the S&P 500. Think of brands like Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Disney, you name it, pretty much every major company in the world is included in that index. So by making one investment, you're going to have access to lots of different really good companies, but you don't get a massive return from it. On average, the S&P 500 or any major index, it's the same with the ASX 200, you'll get about an 8 to 10% return per year. So you're not going to make a huge amount of money from this, but you will get a nice consistent return. So if you think about making 10% per year, it might not really mean much to you but if we try and be a bit more conservative and say that the S&P 500 goes up 8% per year it just means that every nine years your money is going to double in value. So as a practical example if you thought about this like a savings account with a bank where you're using it for your retirement if you started investing when you were 25 and you finished when you're 65 so 40 years at an 8% return and you're putting in $5,000 per year at the end of those 40 years you'd have $1.29 million in comparison to just saving that money in cash you'd only have two hundred thousand dollars so there's a clear difference of a million dollars between these two different places to put your money and with ETFs you get a nice compounding growing effect over time so you don't make a lot of money overnight it's nothing like winning a lottery ticket or investing into a high growth company like Tesla but you do get a really good return in the long run but a better way to get a consistent return from ETFs is by investing in ones that offer a dividend. So this leads us into the strategy for getting $100 per day from your investments. And for this example, I'm going to be using an ETF called SCHD or the Schwab US Dividend ETF. Essentially, it's just a collection of some of the best and most consistent dividend yielding companies within the American market. So it gives you a dividend return of 3.49%. And essentially, a dividend is just a payback to a company's investors from the company's profits. If the company's doing well and is profitable, it will give a percentage of that 
that money to the investors that have helped support the company financially by putting their money into it. So again, keep in mind, technically dividends aren't always guaranteed. During the pandemics, the four major banks in Australia couldn't pay out their dividend and neither could Disney as well, which is a huge American company. But again, things like the coronavirus don't come around very often. So on average, that dividend is going to be paid out quite confidently. So SCHD, since its inception, it's had a return of about 13%. But for the example, we'll be a little bit more conservative and say that it's got an 11% return. So if you were to put in $5,000 per year into SCHD with a 11% annual return, and you did this for 15 years, your end portfolio would be worth $228,000. Keeping in mind that dividend return of 3.49%, you would be getting an annual dividend payment of $37,000 per year. And that equals to $101 per day. Now, I understand that this is quite a long amount of time to be investing and $5,000 per year is always going to be challenging depending on how much money you have available. But it's just to show you the possibility of ETF investing and that you can actually make quite a strong return over time. If you think about this like a retirement account, something you build up to, it can be quite a profitable way to get a consistent return and a very profitable return from your investment since you're going to be getting a dividend income and then also the appreciation of the share price as well over time. So you can make money in two separate ways. Again, it is quite a slow way to make money and that's where you have the option of also investing into individual stocks which are also offered by the stake platform. With individual stocks, you get a bit more control over your money since you are the sole owner or you are the one dictating where that money goes. You can pick out one particular company, do a lot of research, spend some time and energy figuring out if that company is profitable, what's the management team like, what's their plan to grow the business and in the same breath grow the investors money as well. When it comes to individual stocks, there's a few different categories as well. You can have big, well-established blue chip companies like Disney, Coca-Cola and McDonald's. They don't really have a really big increase in their share price, but they do give you a consistent return over time. Then there's also high growth companies like Nvidia and Tesla, more tech-based businesses that can give you a huge return like the run that Nvidia has been seeing going up hundreds of percentages in just a few months. And who knows if that profit or that return will continue, but it is possible for people to make a huge return in a short space of time with individual stocks, something that's not offered by ETFs. They're more of a consistent growth strategy over time. So it really depends on what kind of risk tolerance you have because with individual stocks, they can have a huge increase in share price, but they can drop a lot as well. So once you start making some investments, there's fees that come with the stake platform. So the main ones are a brokerage fee. So this is the cost that you have to pay whenever you buy or sell shares of a company. So it's relative to what country stock market you're investing in. So for Australia, you'll be charged 3 AMD whenever you buy or sell. And whenever you buy or sell an American company, it's going to be 3 US dollars. Then there's also a foreign exchange fee. So if you have currency in Australian dollars on your stake profile, but you want to buy some companies in America, you're going to have to pay a fee to exchange your AUD into USD. So there's a really helpful calculator that will give you a breakdown of the fees that you have to pay. Just as a quick example, if you were to put a thousand AUD onto stake, then you would be charged seven US dollars in fees to convert your AUD into USD. So at the end of it, that 1000 Australian dollars would become 643 US dollars. With this brokerage charge, it's really important to keep in mind, you're gonna be charged this every single time you buy or sell a company. So if you want a dollar cost average or consistently invest the same amount of money into a particular stock or ETF, you're best off doing this on a monthly basis because it's going to cut down your brokerage fees a lot. Say you wanted to invest into SCHD or the S&P 500 every week. If you do this, you're going to be charged three US dollars every single week. So three dollars per investment, 52 weeks in a year. That's 156 US dollars per year you'll be spending just on brokerage fees. Instead, you should be doing this monthly. Then you're only going to pay $36 in brokerage fees. Or you might even break it down to quarterly as well if you wanted. But doing it weekly is going to get really, really expensive. Especially if you're investing into the same company for 10 years, that's over $1,500 US dollars you would have spent just on brokerage charges. And that's money you could have invested in the market instead. There's also some bonus features with Stake, like Stake Black, which gives you some extras like instant access to your funds after you sell them. Because normally this takes about two to three business days for the funds to be accessible in your account. You also get more detailed financial information 
information about the companies if you want to do a bit more research before you buy into them. So Safe Black is 17 Australian dollars when billed yearly and it's $20 per month if it's billed monthly. When you're making your stake profile, you also have to provide a verified bank account. And to do this, if you send through an internet banking statement that has your bank account number and your name at the top, and they'll verify your name with the piece of ID that you provide, because you need to have a verified bank account for whenever you would like to sell your stocks and withdraw that money into your bank account. And lastly, we'll be jumping into the step-by-step -step process of actually buying some shares of a company using stake. So this is what the home screen will look like. You can see my unsettled cash, $28.93. And if you scroll down, it'll show you some of the most popular companies on stake. So you can see Tesla, SoFi, Nvidia, Amazon. You can take a look at some analyst ratings and recommendations they have on companies you should be investing. And then a bit of news about the market as well. So if you wanna buy some shares of a company, just click on the search icon in the bottom right of the screen. So I'll invest into SCHD, the same company we covered for the $100 per day example. So then just type in SCHD at the top. There it is, it comes up here. So once you click on the stock, it'll give you a breakdown about its performance. So you can see across one month, it's gone up 2% three months and then you can do three years as well then if you scroll down it'll give you the open high and low price the market cap the dividend yield it'll show you a blurb about the company how many people have viewed the stock the number of trades how many people are watching the stock any relevant news about the company some related stocks as well so then if you want to buy it just click on buy in the bottom left and it's gonna have a few different buying options so I always just go with market buy and this is where you just buying the shares of the company at the current market price. I'll click on amount and then you would just type in how much you want to invest. So if you just type in $78, you'll be purchasing one share of the company. At this stage, my funds have settled and I'm not yet able to invest into the stock, but clicking review buy order at the bottom is the last step that you have to do. And then from there, it'll take about three business days and then those shares will show up in your wallet. So now that you know how to use stake, it's important to be aware of some of its competitors. And these include Sharesies, which has a lot of other extra features like the ability to manage your KiwiSaver. You can also invest in the New Zealand stock market and it lets you get a high interest savings account that will offer about a 5% return. The fees are also very competitive with Sharesies as well. So if you want to get a complete breakdown of how stake matches up to Sharesies, then check out this video on screen that'll give you a complete breakdown of how the two different platforms compare.